In number theory, the prime number theorem describes the asymptotic distribution of the prime numbers among the positive integers. It formalizes the intuitive idea that primes become less common as they become larger by precisely quantifying the rate at which this occurs. The theorem was proved independently by Jacques Hadamard and Charles-Jean de Laval-Apoussin in 1896 using ideas introduced by Bernhard Riemann. The first such distribution found is pi tilde n log, where pi is the prime counting function and log is the natural logarithm of n. This means that for large enough n, the probability that a random integer not greater than n is prime is very close to 1 log. Consequently, a random integer with at most two n digits is about half as likely to be prime as a random integer with at most n digits. For example, among the positive integers of at most 1,000 digits, about 1 in 2,300 is prime 2,302.6, whereas among positive integers of at most 2,000 digits, about 1 in 4,600 is prime 4,605.2. In other words, the average gap between consecutive prime numbers among the first n integers is roughly log. Statement. Let pi be the prime counting function that gives the number of primes less than or equal to x for any real number x. For example, pi equals 4 because there are 4 prime numbers less than or equal to 10. The prime number theorem then states that x log is a good approximation to pi, in the sense that the limit of the quotient of the two functions pi and x log as x increases without bound is 1, known as the asymptotic law of distribution of prime numbers. Using asymptotic notation this result can be restated as this notation does not say anything about the limit of the difference of the two functions, as x increases without bound. Instead, the theorem states that x log approximates by in the sense that the relative error of this approximation approaches zero as x increases without bound. The prime number theorem is equivalent to the statement that the nth prime number pn satisfies the asymptotic notation meaning, again, that the relative error of this approximation approaches zero as on increases without bound. For example, the 201,015th prime number is 85126773860481910063, and log rounds to 7967418752291744388, a relative error of about 6.4%. The prime number theorem is also equivalent to, and, where are the first and the second Chebyshev functions respectively. History of the asymptotic law of distribution of prime numbers and its proof. Based on the tables by Anton Felkel and Jurij Vega, Adrian Marie Legendre conjectured in 1797 or 1798 that pi is approximated by the function a plus b where a and b are unspecified constants. In the second edition of his book on number theory he then made a more precise conjecture, with a equals 1 and b equals minus 1.08366. Carl Friedrich Gauss considered the same question at age 15 or 16, in J. A. H. R. 1792-1793, according to his own recollection in 1849. In 1838 Peter Gustave Lejeune de Riclet came up with his own approximating function, the logarithmic integral Li. Both Legendre's and de Riclet's formulas imply the same conjectured asymptotic equivalence of pi and x log stated above, although it turned out that de Riclet's approximation is considerably better if one considers the differences instead of quotients. In two papers from 1848 and 1850, the Russian mathematician Pafnuty Lvovich Chebyshev attempted to prove the asymptotic law of distribution of prime numbers. His work is notable for the use of the zeta function zeta predating Riemann's celebrated memoir of 1859, and he succeeded in proving a slightly weaker form of the asymptotic law, namely, that if the limit of pi as x goes to infinity exists at all, then it is necessarily equal to 1.
He was able to prove unconditionally that this ratio is bounded above and below by two explicitly given constants near one, four all sufficiently large x. Although Chebyshev's paper did not prove the prime number theorem, his estimates for pi were strong enough for him to prove Bertrand's postulate that there exists a prime number between n and 2n for any integer n2. An important paper concerning the distribution of prime numbers was Riemann's 1859 memoir on the number of primes less than a given magnitude, the only paper he ever wrote on the subject. Riemann introduced new ideas into the subject, the chief of them being that the distribution of prime numbers is intimately connected with the zeros of the analytically extended Riemann zeta function of a complex variable. In particular, it is in this paper of Riemann that the idea to apply methods of complex analysis to the study of the real function pi originates, extending the ideas of Riemann. Two proofs of the asymptotic law of the distribution of prime numbers were obtained independently by Jacques Hadamard and Charles Jean de La Vallée Poussin and appeared in the same year. Both proofs used methods from complex analysis, establishing as a main step of the proof that the Riemann zeta function zeta is non zero for all complex values of the variable s that have the form s equals 1 plus it with t greater than zero. During the 20th century, the theorem of Hadamard and de la Vallée-Poussin also became known as the prime number theorem. Several different proofs of it were found, including the elementary proofs of A.T.L.E. Selberg and Paul Erdos, while the original proofs of Hadamard and de la Vallée-Poussin are long and elaborate. Later proofs introduced various simplifications through the use of Tauberian theorems but remain difficult to digest. A short proof was discovered in 1980 by American mathematician Donald J. Newman. Newman's proof is arguably the simplest known proof of the theorem, although it is non-elementary in the sense that it uses Corky's integral theorem from complex analysis. Proof methodology In a lecture on prime numbers for a general audience, Field medalist Terence Dow described one approach to proving the prime number theorem in poetic terms. Listening to the music of the primes, we start with a sound wave, that is, noisy, at the prime numbers and silent at other numbers, this is the von Mangold function. Then we analyze its notes or frequencies by subjecting it to a process akin to Fourier transform, this is the Moline transform. The next and most difficult step is to prove that certain notes cannot occur in this music. This exclusion of certain notes leads to the statement of the prime number theorem. According to Tao, this proof yields much deeper insights into the distribution of the primes than their elementary proofs. Proof sketch Here is a sketch of the proof referred to in TAO's lecture mentioned above. Like most proofs of the PNT, it starts out by reformulating the problem in terms of a less intuitive but better behaved prime counting function. The idea is to count the primes with weights to arrive at a function with smoother asymptotic behavior. The most common such generalized counting function is the Chebyshev function, defined by this is sometimes written as Whereas the von Mangold function, namely it is now relatively easy to check that the PNT is equivalent to the claim that, indeed, this follows from the easy estimates and for any, the next step is to find a useful representation for, let be the Riemann zeta function. It can be shown that is related to the von Mangold function, and hence to, via the relation a delicate analysis of this equation and related properties of the zeta function, using the Moline transform and Perron's formula, shows that for non-integer x the equation holds, where the sum is over all zeros of the zeta function. This striking formula is one of the so-called explicit formulas of number theory, and is already suggestive of the result we wish to prove. Since the term x appears on the right-hand side, followed by lower-order asymptotic terms, the next step in the proof involves a study of the zeros of the zeta function. The trivial zeros minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 8 can be handled separately, which vanishes for a large x. 
The non-trivial zeros, namely those on the critical strip, can potentially be of an asymptotic order comparable to the main term x if. So we need to show that all zeros have real parts strictly less than 1. To do this, we take for granted that is meromorphic in the half plane, and is analytic there except for a simple pole at, and that there is a product formula for this product formula follows from the existence of unique prime factorization of integers, and shows that is never zero in this region, so that its logarithm is defined there and right, then now observe the identity so that for all, suppose now that, certainly is not zero, since has a simple pole at, suppose that and let tend to from above, since has a simple pole at and stays analytic, the left hand side in the previous inequality tends to, a contradiction, finally, we can conclude that the PNT is, morally, true, to rigorously complete the proof there are still serious technicalities to overcome, due to the fact that the summation over zeta zeros in the explicit formula for does not converge absolutely but only conditionally and in a principal value sense. There are several ways around this problem but many of them require rather delicate complex analytic estimates that are beyond the scope of this article. Edwards's book provides the details. Another method is to use Ikahara's Tauberian theorem, though this theorem is itself quite hard to prove. D.J. Newman observed that the full strength of Ikahara's theorem is not needed for the prime number theorem, and one can get away with a special case that is much easier to prove. Prime counting function in terms of the logarithmic integral. In a handwritten note on a reprint of his 1838 paper, Sur l'usage des series infinis dans la théorie des nombres, which he mailed to Carl Friedrich Gauss. Peter Gustav Lejeune de Riclet conjectured that an even better approximation to pi is given by the offset logarithmic integral function Li. Defined by indeed, this integral is strongly suggestive of the notion that the density of primes around T should be 1, L-O-G-T. This function is related to the logarithm by the asymptotic expansion so, the prime number theorem can also be written as pi tilde Li. In fact, in another paper in 1899 lavallee Poussin proved that for some positive constant A, where O is the big O notation, this has been improved to because of the connection between the Riemann zeta function and pi. The Riemann hypothesis has considerable importance in number theory. If established, it would yield a far better estimate of the error involved in the prime number theorem than is available today. More specifically, Helga von Koch showed in 1901 that, if and only if the Riemann hypothesis is true, the error term in the above relation can be improved to the constant involved in the big O notation was estimated in 1976 by Lowell Schoenfeld. Assuming the Riemann hypothesis, for all x 2657, he also derived a similar bound for the Chebyshev prime counting function psi, for all x 73.2. This latter bound has been shown to express a variance to mean power law, 1, f noise and to also correspond to the Tweedy compound Poisson distribution. Parenthetically, the Tweedy distributions represent a family of scale invariant distributions that serve as foci of convergence for a generalization of the central limit theorem. The logarithmic integral Li is larger than pi for small values of x. This is because it is counting not primes, but prime powers, where a power p n of a prime p is counted as 1 n of a prime. This suggests that Li should usually be larger than pi by roughly Li, 2, and in particular should usually be larger than pi. However, in 1914, E. Littlewood proved that this is not always the case. The first value of x where pi exceeds li is probably around x equals 10,316. See the article on skewers number for more details. Elementary proofs. In the first half of the 20th century, some mathematicians believed that there exists a hierarchy of proof methods in mathematics depending on what sorts of numbers a proof requires and that the prime number theorem is a deep theorem by virtue of requiring complex analysis. 
This belief was somewhat shaken by a proof of the PNT based on Wiener's Tauberian theorem. Though this could be set aside if Wiener's theorem were deemed to have a depth equivalent to that of complex variable methods, there is no rigorous and widely accepted definition of the notion of elementary proof in number theory. One definition is a proof that can be carried out in first-order Peano arithmetic. There are number theoretic statements provable using second-order but not first-order methods, but such theorems are rare to date. In March 1948, A.T.L.E. Selberg established by elementary means the asymptotic formula where for primes. By July of that year, Selberg and Paul Erdos had each obtained elementary proofs of the PNT, both using Selberg's asymptotic formula as a starting point. These proofs effectively laid to rest the notion that the PNT was deep, and showed that technically, elementary methods were more powerful than had been believed to be the case. In 1994, Carolambos, Cornaris and Costas Dimitrakopoulos proved the PNT using only a formal system far weaker than Peano arithmetic. On the history of the elementary proofs of the PNT, including the Erdos-Selberg priority dispute, see an article by Dorian Goldfeld, Computer Verifications. In 2005, Avigar Dayal employed the Isabel theorem prover to devise a computer verified variant of the Erdos Selberg proof of the PNT. This was the first machine verified proof of the PNT. Avigar chose to formalize the Erdos Selberg proof rather than an analytic one because while Isabel's library at the time could implement the notions of limit, derivative, and transcendental function, it had almost no theory of integration to speak of. In 2009, John Harrison employed Hull Light to formalize a proof employing complex analysis by developing the necessary analytic machinery, including the Cauchy integral formula. Harrison was able to formalize a direct Modern and elegant proof instead of the more involved elementary Erdo Selberg argument. Prime number theorem for arithmetic progressions. Let denote the number of primes in the arithmetic progression A, A plus N, A plus 2N, A plus 3N, less than X. Lejeune de Riclet and Legendre conjectured, and Valet Poussin proved that, if R and N are co prime, then where phi is the Euler's totient function. In other words, the primes are distributed evenly among the residue classes, a modulo n with GCD equals 1. This can be proved using similar methods used by Newman for his proof of the prime number theorem. The siegel wolfish theorem gives a good estimate for the distribution of primes in residue classes. Prime no race Although we have in particular empirically the primes congruent to three are more numerous and are nearly always ahead in this prime number race, the first reversal occurs at x equals 26,861. However Littlewood showed in 1914 that there are infinitely many sign changes for the function, so the lead in the race switches back and forth infinitely many times. The phenomenon that π4 3 is ahead most of the time is called Chebyshev's bias. The prime number race generalizes to other moduli and is the subject of much research. Palturan asked whether it is always the case that pi and pi change places when a and b are co-prime to c. Granville and Martin give a thorough exposition and survey bounds on the prime counting function. The prime number theorem is an asymptotic result. It gives an ineffective bound on pi as a direct consequence of the definition of the limit. For all epsilon greater than zero, there is an s such that for all x greater than s, however, better bounds on pi are known. For instance, Pierre Dusitz, the first inequality holds for all x 599 and the second one for x 355,991. A weaker but sometimes useful bound for EX55 is, in Pierre Doucet's thesis there are stronger versions of this type of inequality that are valid for larger X. Later in 2010, Doucet proved, 4, and 4. The proof by Delave Vallée Poussin implies the following. 
For every epsilon greater than zero, there is an s such that for all x greater than s, approximations for the nth prime number. As a consequence of the prime number theorem, one gets an asymptotic expression for the nth prime number, denoted by pn. A better approximation is again considering the 21015 prime number 85126773860481910063. This gives an estimate of 85126813155547153866. The first five digits match and relative error is about 0.00005%. Rose's theorem states that Pn is larger than n log n. This can be improved by the following pair of bounds. Table of pi, x, log x, and li. The table compares exact values of pi to the two approximations x, log x and li. The last column, x, pi, is the average prime gap below x. The value for pi was originally computed assuming the Riemann hypothesis, it has since been verified unconditionally. Analog for irreducible polynomials over a finite field. There is an analog of the prime number theorem that describes the distribution of irreducible polynomials over a finite field, the form it takes is strikingly similar to the case of the classical prime number theorem. To state it precisely, let f equals gf be the finite field with q elements, for some fixed q, and let nn be the number of monic irreducible polynomials over f whose degree is equal to n. That is, we are looking at polynomials with coefficients chosen from f, which cannot be written as products of polynomials of smaller degree. In this setting, these polynomials play the role of the prime numbers, since all other monic polynomials are built up of products of them. One can then prove that if we make the substitution x equals qn, then the right-hand side is just which makes the analogy clearer. Since there are precisely qn monic polynomials of degree n, this can be rephrased as follows. If a monic polynomial of degree n is selected randomly, then the probability of it being irreducible is about 1 n. One can even prove an analog of the Riemann hypothesis, namely that the proofs of these statements are far simpler than in the classical case. It involves a short combinatorial argument, summarized as follows. Every element of the degree n extension of f is a root of some irreducible polynomial whose degree d divides n, by counting these roots in two different ways one establishes that where the sum is over all divisors d of n. Mobius inversion then yields where mu is the Mobius function. The main term occurs for d equals n, and it is not difficult to bound the remaining terms. The Riemann hypothesis statement depends on the fact that the largest proper divisor of n can be no larger than n. 2. 